Hey guys, I'm back. It's great to be back. I love you all. Please be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to get back into my short videos again. And while I was away, I guess some things happen. Candace Owens of The Daily Wire. The Daily Wire, I guess, is associated with Ben Shapiro, but it's a whole group. And it's called a conservative media outlet. And notice I put conservative in quotes because what happened with Candace Owens, it, it raises a bigger question that I want to get into. On the surface level, a lot of people are debating because Candace Owens, she's a, a black woman, but she's also a Christian. And she pushed back on this whole Israel first policy that the Daily Wire has. And the Daily Wire has sort of the mainstream Republican idea, like Liz Cheney, Asa Hutchison, Lindsey Graham, Mitt Romney, uh, so forth. Those type of people of, we got to put Israel first, Israel before America. And that's how they define conservatism. In fact, if you remember the Republican debates, uh, Asa Hutchison, literally, he didn't have a lapel pin of the American flag. He had a lapel pin of a foreign flag, Israel. Could you imagine if he had a flag of Russia or China? But no, he had it of Israel. This is how cucked our politicians are. But the question is, is that really conservatism? And what is conservatism? So I, I'm not really going to take it about the whole Israel thing necessarily or a defense of Candace Owens. Uh, she blocked me long ago on Twitter. I'm not sure why I never interacted with her, but she kind of had a sketchy past. When she first started out, she had like a doxing website. She was kind of left wing. And then she kind of migrated into uh, the conservative sphere. She was on Alex Jones and she was an opponent of Black Lives Matter. And so here's a black woman. She's opposed to Black Lives Matter based, and everyone gets excited because everyone that's a conservative or a Republican, the most exciting thing ever is to have a Black person validate your views. That means it's okay. So Alex Jones had her on, and she kind of got her fame from that point. Then she was invited to the Daily Wire. I guess she's making like $3, $3 million a year. So don't feel sorry for her. She got paid out. And I think her husband's worth like $100 million. So don't worry. You don't have to send her money or super chat. She's fine. She's loaded. So I'm not really feeling sorry for her. And the reason she got fired from the Daily Wire was her criticism of Israel. But this is, take a step back. What does it really mean to be conservative? I, I, well, what is it? National Review went through a similar thing. It was started by William F. Buckley Jr., in the 50s, I believe. He was from Yale. And for years, that was sort of the conservative template. It, it, it was people that were involved with politics understood National Review. And you had writers like Joseph Sobrin and Sam uh, Samuel Francis and other people. And it was primarily conservative, meaning Christian. But then it went through this evolution with the neocons who were not Christian and really focused more on Israel than the other positions. And eventually they purged out like Joseph Sobrin and Sam Francis. And now it's a very neocon publication. I don't think anyone reads it. But this, this brings up a point. What does it really mean to be conservative? And I don't know if anyone said this before, maybe other people have, but I, I have three things. I, I sit down and I wrote, what are the three big things that define you're a conservative or you're on the right? And this is higher than just America. I think this applies to any country and most cultures. And I think there's three fundamental things. And no, it has nothing to do with the capital gains tax rate or how do we have health care or the environment or climate change. None of that. All those things are important. Don't get me wrong. But what are the fundamental things? And I have three things. And the, when I sat down, there's God, family, and nation. Those are the three things. So if you're on the right or you're a conservative, you got to put those three things first. So let's start with the first one, God, because God, that really defines your morality, how you look at a nation, what binds the people together. And America was always a Christian nation. You may not like that and you may not be a Christian, okay? And it wasn't like you had to be a Christian to be American. 
But it was clear if you read the founding fathers and throughout our history, this was Christian. When you went to school, you learned from the Bible. Uh, the federal holidays were Christmas and Easter. Yeah, you could have other religions and we would tolerate them, but we were a Christian nation. We're no longer a Christian nation, but we were. And that's what defined us. That's the glue that held us together. And that's the most important thing because that defines much of the morality, how you look at life. Uh, Christians have a radically different uh, view of the world than, let's say, Judaism, which is hev heavily the Talmud. Uh, yes, I know the Old Testament influenced the New Testament, but most of Judaism doesn't really follow the Old Testament so much anymore. It defines it through the uh, Talmud, which is very similar to the Pharisees during Jesus' time. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but that, that's what it is. It's radically different than Christianity. There's not really, it's, it's not compatible. That's why I always laugh when people say, oh, Judeo-Christian. I'm like, no, they're really not compatible. And when I say Judaism, I'm talking about the religion not the ethnicity, because yeah, uh, Jesus was Jewish. Uh, his disciples, most of them were Jewish. The Apostle Paul was Jewish. Ethnicity, but they gave their faith into Christ. So I'm speaking a religious point of view, and same with Islam or other religions, they're just not compatible. And this country was Christian. So if you're going to be like a conservative right-winger in America, it doesn't mean you have to literally believe in Christianity in your heart or whatever, but you have to basically abide by Christian concepts. That's what it means. So to be like an atheist conservative is sort of a weird flex or a Muslim conservative in America. It doesn't really fit. And this applies to other countries too. Be like if you're in Israel, if you're a conservative or right winger, you really support Judaism. I mean, it has to be. It wouldn't make much sense. You're like, I'm a conservative Israeli and I'm Muslim. I, it just wouldn't, you know, or Christian, it really wouldn't make a lot of sense. Or Islam, right? You're in Saudi Arabia. I'm a conservative, hardcore right winger in Saudi Arabia and I'm a Buddhist. It's like, what? And uh, it, it doesn't make sense. You got to have your world philosophy. So number one, if you're a conservative or on the right in America, I would say most Western countries, you at least got to adopt the Christian ethos. And now, again, I'm not trying to say that you have to really believe it or, I mean, you could, you know, on your own be pagan or whatever, or agnostic, but you got to kind of tie into that philosophy. Otherwise, it, there's nothing that really binds us together. And we saw this flare up because I guess Candace Owens and the whole Christ is King, because we as Christians believe Christ is King. And that offended the owner of the Daily Wire because he's Jewish. Well, I get it, but that kind of shows how we're not really compatible, right? And it shows how diversity or multiculturalism doesn't really work. That's why we have separate nations. And Israel is good to be Jewish, but we are a Christian nation. It doesn't mean we only have Christians, but that needs to be our ethos. And if you find it offensive for someone saying Christ is king, well, that'd be like if I lived in Israel, because not everyone in Israel is, you know, follows the Jewish religion. They'd be like, oh, I find the whole Jewish religion to be offensive. Well, you're living in Israel. You got to adapt. And same like if you go to Saudi Arabia. I find Islam to be offensive. I hate this calls to prayer. I don't want to go. To, I don't want to listen to it. I don't believe this. Well, if you create a stink about it, you're probably not compatible. And so I would say as a definitional thing, if you're on the right in America or the West, you at least got to embrace the broad view of Christianity. And, and, and again, a lot of clar clarifications it doesn't mean in your heart. Uh, that you necessarily believe that Jesus is the son of God or that you go to church or, I mean, those things are good. Don't get me wrong, but you have to, you have to understand that's our philosophical idea of the West. And you can't have Western civilization without Christianity. If you study history, they're tied together. And so that has to be number one. So having a publication like the Daily Wire, which is primarily Jewish, in America, oh, that's fine, but it's not really conservative uh, because it fails on the first category, the God category. We have two radically different views of the world. And so this kind of flared up. And the Bible says, what fellowship can lightness have with darkness? 
And, and Jesus wasn't saying other people are evil, but if you're in the light, how can you have fellowship with people in the darkness? It, it's just incompatible. It doesn't mean you have to be cruel to them or mean to them, but they're, they're just not, they're not one of you. And it's just, it's not going to work. So that'd be the first criteria of any organization, any organization that has a problem with Christianity, I would say is not conservative or right wing, at least in the West. And, uh, and, and again, I'm saying that uh, broadly, but in, it, you don't have to have a certain denomination or whatever. And your, your government can be that doesn't really promote Christianity. That's okay. But if a people or group or government or organization is all upset because you say Christ is king, it's not conservative. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. It's just not conservative. So by this definition, the Daily Wire is not conservative. Okay, so that's the God thing. The second thing I have is family. And as a conservative, you got to believe in the fundamental unit, which is family, which is not two men, not two women, not three uh, lesbians and two gay men. No, no, it's a man and a woman, and you have children. That's the family. Uh, everything else isn't. And you got to support what supports the family. And that means opposing sexual immorality, like most of the LGBTQ agenda, uh, open divorce, uh, feminism, which tries to tear apart men and women, or even I would say like a, some of these men that hate women, uh, that, is, that is not a conservative value. A conservative value is men and women coming together and having children and forming a family. That's the bedrock of a civilization. And don't get me wrong, I'm saying these are as the ideal. So if you've been divorced or if you failed in a certain area, if you engaged in bad practices, hey, I have. I have 100%. So I'm not throwing stones. No one's perfect. But I'm saying what the ideal should be. So if you're going to have a conservative or right-wing publication group or whatever, you got to really focus on the family. And not this weird definition of the family like the SJWs make it a family being a man and women, woman and children. And that's the fundamental unit, even over government. That is God, then family, governments later. So God first, then family. And if you don't support family in that sense, or if you support all this rainbow initiative or feminism or anything that divides a family, you're not conservative. And you can say, okay, I'm not conservative. Well, that's fine. I'm just saying that's a requirement. And the third thing is, that you put your nation first. And a nation is not the same thing as a country. I've said this many times. A nation is not something you join, you're born into. It comes from the Latin word nadio, which meant uh, blood, birth. You're the term like neonatal. It's the same derivation of the word. It's so a nation, you're born into it. So like, for example, if you're a Cherokee Indian, I can't go out to Oklahoma and say, hey, I want to join your tribe as a Cherokee Indian, they would laugh at me. No, you got to be born into it. And that that's primarily how it is. Like Japan, I can never be Japanese. I could be a Japanese citizen, but I'm not ethnically Japanese. You have to be born into it. That's the nation. And so the nation is the primary thing then that hopefully forms the country. And the, it doesn't mean it has to be 100% of just one nationality or ethnic group. But it's like Israel. Israel is primarily Jewish. They have other groups there too, but it's a Jewish state. That is nationalism. And part of being on the right or conservative is embracing that type of nationalism where the government's primary purpose is for the good of the nation, meaning the people, not outsiders, but the people. I know this sounds really wild and crazy, but the goal of our politicians or their obligation should be, the first obligation is to do everything that is the best for the United States people, the nation, not outsiders. So for example, you build up, just say immigration, uh, total immigration or illegal or whatever. The first thing politicians should think is, is this in the interest of the people that live here? Like putting in a million uh, Haitians, some who are cannibals, is this good for the nation, the people? And I would think they would say, no, it's not good for the nation. My primary duty is for the nation of the people in the United States. It's not to Haiti. Similarly, and this is where Daily Wire gets off 
is your primary interest is to defend our nation, which in our case is the United States. If you're German, it's Germany, British is British and so forth. But in the United States, the, the our primary purpose should be what's good for the United States. It doesn't mean we're hateful towards other countries or we can't be friendly towards other countries, but they should not drive our policy. Right now, Israel drives our policy, especially our foreign policy in the United States, and that's outrageous. And it's nothing against Israel. They have a right to be like any other nation, but they don't have a right to control our country. We want our, and right now they control our politicians because our politicians, they put, most of them, put their allegiance first to Israel, like Asa Hutchinson and many others, uh, Nikki Haley, to Israel over Americans. And if you support that concept, you're not conservative. It's, it's just that. So if you support like Israel over America, by definition, you're not a conservative person. You're not a conservative publication like the Daily Wire or government. And so in, if you're going to analyze any group, you have to look at those three things. God, do they worship our God, our religion? Two, do they put an importance on family? And three, do they put a primary importance on our nation above others? In the Daily Wire, for example, number one, they don't. They have an issue. The owner has an issue with the Christ is King concept. That's fine, but then it's incompatible. He's not a conservative. Family, I think they support the family pretty well, so I'll give them that. And the third one is putting our nation first, which in our case is America. If you're in Germany, it'd be Germany first. Uh, they do not put America first. They put Israel first because that's mostly their ethnicity. And I don't blame them. That makes a lot of sense. I, I get it. That's their people. They want to support their people first. But that's that's not our people. And see, it's incompatible. We need, if you're a conservative or right-winger, politicians or people or organization organizations that put our people first. Doesn't mean we hate other people, but we want to put our people first. So those are the three things that what I call the GFN, God, family, nation. And based on that criteria, the Daily Wire, two out of the three, they fail. So they're not really a conservative organization. Yeah, because they can trigger the libs at a college campus. You know, Ben Shapiro can trigger the, the snowflake girl with purple hair about gender ideology. Okay, well, that's good. That's point number two. But that doesn't, you know, that's family. But that doesn't deal with the first one, God, and that doesn't deal with the last one, which is nation. Uh, in both cases, someone like Ben Shapiro, he has a different God than we do. He doesn't believe in that Jesus Christ is the Savior. And in the last one, he doesn't believe in America first. He believes his country, his ethnic country, should come first. Israel, uh, Israel has priority over America. That is his position. Israel needs to protect their borders. Uh, United States, we shouldn't. We should allow everyone in. But Israel, they need to protect their borders to keep it Jewish. Uh, that's the difference. And so it's pretty simple to figure these things out. It, it kind of came up because all the Candace Owens thing, thing, but if you dig deeper, you can see a deeper issue. Talk to you guys later.